so good morning everyone good evening uh, good afternoon uh, for people connecting from various countries uh, let me begin with an interesting story new facility of we work 60000 square feet was about to be completed and was awaiting final inspection and approval of the fire department however due to covid 19 the fire department cancelled all inspections indefinitely this left gc without the necessary approval to reach completion stage which would allow viva to take over the space fortunately the gc team was using 360 degree camera to shoot progress photos and footage for the owner so they decided to use the same for the fire marshal after a review of the sample video which allowed the inspectors to get a 360 degree look at the space as well as rotate the view up and down the fire marshal authorized a full virtual inspection which gc passed this allowed gc to turn the project over to we work on time technology saved the day will this become modus operandi for inspection going ahead the bigger question will covid 19 drive the adoption of technology and redefine ac workflows for this and much more with a special focus on on site construction phase of ac welcome to our panel discussion reforming ac to emerge successfully from covid 19 i am varun bhatia co-founder and ceo of encircle for the last 8 years we have been developing workflow automation for ac industry and we have been helping such companies with technology transformation we we all know the multiple challenges ac is facing to sustain and grow during the given times of lockdown and social distancing so we have invited industry leaders and our partners to guide us to sail through these times i am playing the role of host and moderator for today's discussion please put your hands together in welcoming our esteemed panel speakers um, <clears> the <throat> first panel speaker for the evening is passionate technologist who has led sanvio to evangelize uh, led sanvio to evangelize digital transformation of ac industry for more than 15 years ensuring that industry has the foundation of innovation and advanced technology that will usher in the world of industrialized construction since starting sanvio in 2008 in the midst of great recession he led the company on the path of sustained growth constantly expanding company's product and service offerings all the while growing its geographic footprint worldwide and building strategic partnerships ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together in welcoming ashfaq rashid founder and ceo of sanvio thank you varun excited to be here thank you for joining ashfaq our next panelist is bringing 23 years of experience as an accomplished software product manager he is a visionary business leader with a passion for innovation and key expertise in 3d based software development for the construction industry co-inventor of the patent for system and method of for hybrid so, solid mo, solid and surface modeling for computer aided design environments he has been managing distributed teams across greece serbia india and lebanon over the past 20 years he has led development and uh, deployment of 3d based digital transformation software servicing capital uh, capital construction project that exceed us 40 billion in cumulative construction value please welcome ryan software manager of visual project controls at ccc thank you thank you for having me here it's my pleasure looking forward thank you thank you ryan to join us today for ac the impact on demand is becoming visible in the us 2020 is projected to lose construction of 30 million square feet across office and 20 million square feet across retail space that is 50 million square feet lost for the financial year further possibly supply chain bottlenecks of equipment and material including structural steel and glass from asia could could cause project delays in currently funded projects or reduce spending on future ones the labor intensive nature has brought uh, brought in a host of operational challenges ranging from experienced personal disruption a shortage of government personnel for various uh, for various inspection and approval however things have changed and will continue to change going ahead some companies have changed already some not enough the new regulations on for on site construction will force the ones to what the best companies are already getting on with it i personally feel that all of us need to move to a point where where 
guidance is owned by the industry rather than the industry waiting to be told what to do. So I, I start with my first question. How do you see, um, uh, so Ashfaq and Ryan, uh, how do you see COVID-19 impacting the industry? What are your thoughts, Ashfaq? Thank you, Arun. Uh, before I respond to that, I just want us to uh, recognize the reality of the times that we live in. What is important to recognize is that this, even though this started as a health crisis, governments across the world, worldwide, came down into a simultaneous lockdown uh, in a synchronized manner. This has been unprecedented uh, government-imposed lockdown that has caused a, that is causing an intense economic shock to all the countries worldwide. At the same time, we have now a uh, simultaneous demand destruction, a supply chain disruption, and people's behaviors are changing. So as business managers, when we recognize this, so let me go over each one of those very quickly. Uh, just two days ago, <clears throat> Congressional uh, Business uh, Budget Office uh, projected that there is going to be a 39.6% drop in Q2, uh, a GDP drop at an annualized uh, basis. Just think about it, a 40% GDP drop is what is Q2 is going to be looking at. And uh, unemployment is projected to be at 14% in Q2 and going up to 16% in Q3. And we're supposed to end Q4 uh, around projected at 10% or something like that. So that is on the demand side. And on the supply side, all the business managers are now sitting up and looking at and saying, uh, the risk that they are facing in the supply chain disruption that is that they are looking at. Um, and global supply chains are going to be under scrutiny. Um, the government, the governments, and also look out for government mandates uh, of supply chains um, uh, on, on supply chain, which is going to be like legislation on tariffs or legislation to bring the supply chain to be localized and um, closer near shore or onshore supply, uh, global supply chains to be moved. Along with that, you have people's behavior changing. We all businesses had a intense lesson of about six weeks on how to run uh, uh, the operations and the companies remotely. Uh, like like you, I, I've heard you say, Varun, the, the virtual is new normal now. Um, so and um, with uh, so we have now that behavior. Companies are now not looking to go back. Uh, every every uh, facility manager is uh, or the uh, company CEO is looking. Do I need to re you know renew that lease of millions of square feet that is there and I, as a business manager, then I'm sitting down and I'm looking at it and saying, wait a minute, there are entire industries that are um, disrupted, like uh, airline, uh, hospitality um, are all um, um, now not coming back for years. Commercial real estate is may not be in demand. That industry is going to go away for a um, uh, uh, few years. So sorry to be the gloom and doom guy, but I think let us recognize the reality, right? Once we recognize the reality, then we can plan on it. We can um, uh, um, you know, work around these things. So the reality is, what is it that we can do? Um, recognize that we are going to be in this for a long time. Um, and then, uh, Constantly, we have to now strive uh, to be relevant to our customers. We have to really work hard in bringing value to our customers. Um, and technology is like in the last um, slowdown in 2008, 2009 that we all experienced. It was technology that then came on well, we became more efficient. Again, 
the, this time around also technology is going to be the one that is going to be the key differentiator and your competitive edge. So start investing in technology now is what I would say. Interesting thoughts and a lot of insights. Uh, I mean, Ashfaq, I, I really appreciate that. I think supply chain will be completely reshaped. Uh, but most interestingly, uh, I see a good comparison between uh, 2008 recession and uh, the latest COVID-19. Uh, in 2008, probably it hit at slightly uh, elongated manner in different times in different countries. It started with US and then spread uh, slowly to other countries. But as you said, COVID-19 is just hitting the entire globe simultaneously. That's that's very uh, unique in the um, history. And, um, and I see uh, probably a lot of companies uh, in 2008, which had projected very nicely from uh, that they would recover back in six months. Uh, in these times, no one is able to predict uh, how the situation would be. Um, I, I definitely uh, good comparison. Uh, so uh, let me move on to Ryan. Ryan, what are your thoughts on uh, how this would impact the industry? As I was listening to Ashfaq, I couldn't but remember about what the reality of what we're living today. I couldn't but remember uh, the well-known Chinese curse, which translates in English to "May you live in interesting times." We are living in very interesting times. If you look in history books, uh, this is not precedented. Yes, there's the Spanish flu one, 100 years ago, but it was not, uh, uh, the economy was not the same. And the global reach of this pandemic is second to none. And the impact on economy is second to none. Going back to, to our business, I work for CCC. We fall into the category of international EPC contractors. As an international EPC contractor, we face the global challenge. We don't operate in one continent or in one country. So we have to cope with the measures taken uh, in different countries and in different places. Today, to be frank, as I'm talking, almost all CCC projects are affected. Uh, some of them even are on hold. The highest impact we got was from the oil and gas industry, which was already, even before COVID-19, was suffering. And COVID-19 came as a knockout. Now, however, luckily being a diversified EPC contract, we work in different places and we work on different type of projects. We have strong experience in building hospitals. Uh, so what we are doing now is what we always have done is while we are looking at opportunities to diversify and go to other opportunities uh, where uh, modular construction uh, will, be, uh, will be the mode of operation for hospitals, uh, even for quarantined buildings that need to be ready in no time. But among all this madness, uh, I want to throw a positive thought. As I was listening about the price of, uh, about the drop in the, in the demand on real estate. Yes, it's true. Demand it dropped and will keep dropping. But also the, dem the supply will drop tremendously uh, because of all this disruption. And eventually the economy, I believe, will heal itself. And sometimes, not very near, but sometimes in the future, we will see a rise in real estate uh, prices, which might be a little bit an amplification. That is very interesting. That's almost a counter thoughts here. Uh, Ashfaq uh, presenting that this would be a long drawn uh, thing and uh, you sharing some positive thoughts here. Uh, I guess we all need to find some the silver lining amongst this crisis. So all of us agree that there is an economic impact on the construction due to COVID and we need to take action now to recover. Uh, we need to embrace the new ways of working like maintaining social distancing on site, but also fundamentally change the way projects are conceived, designed, procured, and delivered. What possible actions do you see, uh, Ashfaq? So, um, new health uh, regulations will be imposed on the job site. Um, so, uh, uh, the social distancing 
um, rules and the cleaning rules and all of those uh, uh, will be imposed quite significantly. So the number of people that are going to be on the job site is going to be very limited, right? And the, the sequences are uh, of sequence of tasks is also going to be very um, uh, controlled. What this uh, imposition uh, is going to uh, require the companies is to start thinking of what was a, a trend that was already happening, right? Um, along with the technology adoption that we had seen, uh, we had seen the adoption of what uh, recently of industrialized construction. Uh, with industrialized construction, um, so, Remember, even in the previous uh, slowdown, any time there is a shock to a system, external shock to a system, it acts as an accelerator to the trends that were already happening. Um, so we will see that I, this this shock will also cause the that acceleration to take place. And prefab and modular construction, like how Ryan was mentioning, that modular construction would be the um, uh, would be the uh, adoption that I see personally uh, companies to uh, uh, owners to go for uh, uh, construction companies to propose and 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 uh, uh, industry to adopt um, with with modular construction um, you know industrialized construction is the best most sustainable and uh, resilient operation uh, operating model that is available today. Um, and why is that? Um, it offers, it has two principles that I believe that we, sh we should look into and adopt, which is industrialized construction lends itself and uh, forces you to have a systemic thinking, systems thinking design, um, as well as uh, so system, come, multi-traded um, um, MEP uh, installations. So on the prefab, can you uh, think of a, uh, a complete system that needs to be designed and built and, and then bring it and, or the job site and just, just install it. Uh, the second thing that it is going to impose on is production uh, thinking of uh, a factory environment, right? Um, that production thinking um, is going to uh, let you sequence it more rigorously and and continuously. Um, so that is what I think is the action items that we need to look at, Varun. I thank you, Ashtag. I I really hope that uh, uh, COVID nineteen helps us accelerate the technology adoption, and this definitely brings. Uh, with cultural change and probably need of the hour. I am also uh, very much like the ideas uh, that you throw in production thinking and supply chain based on system thinking. Uh, I think uh, we all need to uh, look and think in uh, these directions. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts? Again, a good thing about COVID-19 is I got to spend more time with my son, Oliver. He is three years old. That's time. <laughs> As I was playing with him, he told me that. Uh, Daddy, what is this? I said, this is a guy. Ryan, your voice is breaking a bit. Ryan. So, that I can tell them evolve or disappear. We don't have that choice anymore. If we don't evolve, we will disappear. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yes. We can hear now. Is the internet? Okay. So basically. I was talking about site is that there are a lot of high tech and digital transformation. Uh, Ryan, your voice is breaking a bit. Uh, 
Ryan, not again. You're you're breaking. Ryan is having too much fun on the beach. <laughs> so, um, do, do we want see. To I'm trying to fix my internet connection. I'm sorry about that. Is this fine now? Yeah. It yeah. Much better, okay. Much better. Okay. Sounds better. So basically. Um, Let's look at, the, at, at how technology is reacting to COVID-19 today. In my humble opinion, we're going to more reactive after the fact remedies. For example, contact tracing. Contact tracing is what everybody is thinking about now and using IoT technologies and wearables and helmets. Yes, it will allow me to detect contact and then allow me to uh, disrupt the contact and stop it. How about the impact on productivity? What will happen if I have to stop a, a critical activity? This is all reactive and it's nice and it's good for health reasons and to save the, the, the safety of our workers. But let's step back a little bit. Let's reinvent our business processes. And, and we can do that because let's look, for example, at the Toyota way, how they reinvented and they reached a just in time uh, methodology and uh, it's well proven that change in their productivity and in their uh, in their status and the whole automotive industry after that followed the Toyota. So, go lean in construction. What do I mean by go lean? We were even having trouble telling people to plan by by the week. Now we have to plan by the hour. We have to use advanced work packaging to subdivide our mega project into small, tiny ins installation work packages, where by the end of the day, to cut a long story short, what I want is I want my crew or my foreman to wake up in the morning, wear his safety suit, put his mask, pick up his job card, go to site, do what he has to do, as per the job card, get back. We need to be able to micromanage to this level of detail and the systems are there. We just need the people to start adopting the change. And then the beauty of 4D visualization, back to planning, which is in a way similar to the line of balance technique, uh, uh, this will reveal itself. The tools are there and they are well proven. Now is the time for the people to start making this change. Um, I just... So back to the technology, it's very important to, to think about three main pillars for all this to happen. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration is the key because we want people rem remotely to be able to collaborate over the cloud. The cloud technology is there, collaborative technology is there. We can do it, we know it's there, it's mature enough. We need to make for the second pillar, why? Because we need the data to be available fast enough and at, at any time for decision making and third parties of 3D visualization. Of course, technologies like laser scanning and like uh, uh, technologies like laser scanning and like, for example, photogrammetry, where we take photos and we rebuild the 3D model from the photos and drones, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, will be adopted on large scale now, and they are the easiest to adopt. But for inspection, for after the fact, for measuring. That's what I can think of. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, such technology, such as. Uh, I mean, virtual inspections and scanning uh, would definitely on the rise. You, you can walk through uh, almost virtually and, and inspect and visualize the premises uh, completely remotely. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the workflows for uh, scanning, uh, like scan to BIM are going to be very crucial. Uh, and uh, we ourselves are working on a machine learning based approach to automatically convert point clouds to 3D BIM models. Um, I think there are exciting times ahead. Uh, uh, On-site construction uh, will see unique challenges considering the labor-intensive nature and close working proximity during on-site activities. Uh, also, data from Office of, Office of National Statistics revealed low-skill construction workers had a death rate of 25.9 deaths per 100,000 people, placing it among the worst hit professions. The importance of resuming construction is absolutely critical, but safety of human life is of paramount importance. Hence, as an industry, we need to embrace and redefine the way we work on site. What are the changes in on site workflows do you envision, and how technology will help in doing the same? Uh, 
Ashfaq, right? Uh, maybe we want to begin with your thoughts. Um, let us let me respond to the the grim statistics of injuries and deaths that you just uh, uh, pointed there, uh, Varun. Uh, and uh, again, I would go back to the a controlled environment in a prefab shop. Uh, or, uh, or uh, with modular construction techniques uh, and prefab techniques actually uh, has shown to improve the injury statistics, uh, bring down the injury statistics dramatically. And we owe it to the men and hardworking men and women of, um, of this industry, uh, um, those safety improvements. Um, uh, 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 and so that they can go, go home safely in the exactly the same way they showed up in the morning. Um, that, that is a, a, a crucial and essential. So now going back to your question of um, what is the on-site workflow that you see, um, we got a very good intense lesson of working remotely and then we realized that, hey, um, uh, most of most of my work for uh, from March and April and May uh, went on very well doing remote and found out that it is actually very few people that is needed on the job site and everybody else from the PXS to the four superintendents to foremen um, that were doing it a lot of it can be done remotely right. Um, so uh, that is what we are learning. Uh, it, it, you remember the big rooms uh, where we were sitting down and uh, um, you know, it was required everybody needs to be in the same room and do the, do the things and the, uh, guess what? Projects are running fine without the big rooms and uh, how Ryan pointed out all the collaborative uh, things are happening and we, we just needed that push uh, to do those things. So. Um, uh, there are uh, what we have learned is there are a lot of things that can be done remotely and let us do the, the remotely uh, planning and collaboration um, is essential getting down to that uh, by the hour um, rather than uh, uh, that detailed planning is um, is uh, important and the beauty of this is once you have um, uh, started to do remotely and you have decided to have much more detailed plan, guess what now we are working on is a lot of standardization um, on uh, compared to the building type and the industry type, then I can standardize a lot of these workflows and automation is kicking in. Um, and, and those things are helping us. Are, that is the added value that now I can take to the, my customers and say, hey, look, I can do the same work uh, at, a, at a shorter period of, in a shorter time or okay, bring, improve the efficiencies that are there, primarily because uh, you have now uh, started to automate these things or started to standardize it and that is helping us automate it. Um, again, going into the industrialized construction methodology. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like you said, uh, big, big rooms are a thing of a past and probably big rooms are going to get replaced by Zoom rooms, perhaps. And then uh, definitely um, uh, with, with all these uh, challenges, uh, we, we all need to think, start thinking about how we can automate things, how we can bring down a lot of um, workflows and uh, reduce the time among that. Uh, that's a very interesting thoughts, uh, Ashwak. Uh, Ryan, would you like to add? I can relate a lot uh, and I like what uh, Ashwak said. We really have to transform the job sites from an uncontrolled environment because when I, when I first joined the construction industry, I come from a software and uh, AI background. I asked uh, I asked my boss back then, okay, what's, what's about the construction? It's just another supply chain. It's another industry. What's so special about it? He was convincing me that construction is so special. And he said, well, it's an uncontrolled environment. 
it doesn't rain in the middle of uh, of in, in the middle of uh, of, of like a, a car uh, where you're building cars in the middle of a car. It, it might rain outside. It might have um, things. It's really a very uncontrolled environment. But it's time really we transform it as much as possible to a controlled environment. I don't want to be repeating myself, but really we have to go lean. Uh, we really have to think about eliminating waste, uh, really being efficient, uh, really knowing, uh, having more full control over what we do. Um, uh, that's that's the key, and it's the key is in really changing the business process. Um, and and if I if I if I can just uh, uh, tell you, for example, an example of how the workflows, because your question was about the workflows on site in the beginning, how it might change. Well, guess what? There's a, there's a new crew in town, right? Who's the new crew in town? That's disinfection crew. Disinfection. And this disinfection crew will be very busy. We'll be very busy if we are to continue our site works. Yeah. So how can we optimize that? Uh, uh, we really we need to make sure that, for example, in a small construction zone, uh, people go in, finish all their work, get out, and then the disinfection crew will come overnight, clean for the next room to come in. So this is the kind of controlled environment and management that we need to achieve. And guess what, we've been talking about this for so long and uh, many of our projects, they applied it. It took a lot of effort from us for them to apply it. And a difference was made, but now it's not an option anymore, again, I'm saying. Of course, we rely for this, this infection crew to be, uh, to relax a little bit. I've seen um, a new technology in Hong Kong it uses nanotechnology and it claims that 90 days after you disinfect using this, this liquid, for 90 days, this nanotechnology liquid will dismantle the viruses which are stuck on top of um, surfaces. So I see a future for this in construction. It might be expensive, but much less expensive than hiring all those crews to disinfect and infect over time. Um, so uh, again, I go back to the job card. <laughs> really, our work and our our crews uh, need to reach a time. Look at this nice ni nice schedule with that planning. Things are smooth. The lines are really bal well balanced. No disruptions. Uh, this is what we try to achieve. This is what we are hoping to achieve. And uh, and I I finish by this part by just telling something very interesting for my Mark Twain. If you if you have worked on the construction site. You know that, that what I'm talking about is very hard to achieve. Some people say it's impossible. But I repeat what Mark Twain said. They didn't know it was impossible, so they did it. So let's forget about this being important. Yeah, I think we all need to make impossible happen now. <laughs> and then I, I, I do feel this level of planning uh, with, with that detail and like you said earlier, uh, plan by the hour really require uh, a different complete tool set and technology uh, we we we, nearly, uh, we all uh, need to aim for that and really plan by the hour um, i mean what time a crew gets in what time they have to come out i think we, we really can't take a chance to miss any timelines in such cases so um, continuing on uh, as Indeed. i mentioned in my last panel discussion with Tom and Stephen, uh, companies will have to take a two-pronged approach, short-term actions and steps, and long-term approach of making AC business healthier. However, uh, we need to address the present bleeding first and then focus on improving the process in the long run. So my next question is, what steps should companies take in leveraging technology for, for the same in very near term? And then if you can uh, share something on the long term as well. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, go for that. Um, here is uh, my thought process. In a slowdown, especially as severe as this, um, we can, weak companies will uh, go away, unfortunately. Um, good companies will survive. And it is the strong companies that actually uh, really thrive uh, and come out much more stronger. Good, great companies are the ones that are going to strive and come out much more stronger after this, um, with the up, upswing that comes, usually comes after a severe slowdown. So let us all strive to be that great company, right? 
Um, and the trend of uh, digital transformation is what construction companies need to jump on and go towards. Um, so you need, companies need to have what is their digital transformation journey is going to look like, right? Um, I, it is not something that I'm proposing that we go ahead and we uh, invest. That is the cash flow preservation is key in this case. So let us, it is not like you, you go ahead and you uh, invest a lot of money into it, but please, please take a step the leaders in the company take a step and say, what is my digital transformation journey is going to look like and have a plan on that and break that plan down to smaller chunks, break that plan into smaller bits and pick the ones that you can do right now, because you need those success stories, quick success stories. You are looking to uh, uh, transform your organization, and those changes are not simple and not easy. Um, but have the plan, work that plan. So have the um, a, a smaller bites, break up manageable tasks, and implement those. Um, I would come up with two things that I would say: um, invest in your employees' training. Upskilling is very essential. If the employees are sitting there um, you know, with with uh, with some free time, please propose with your what is your long term plan, digital transformation plan, and which technologies that you are going to go adopt, and then um, go ahead with uh, uh, you know in, in training your employees with that. Number two is. Um, if you had been holding off, because I'm trying to come up with the examples of which is uh, low hanging fruit. If you had been holding off, get onto the cloud, bring all your data and uh, your um, um, documents on the cloud so that you, when the employees go to the job site, those documents and that information is available to them on their mobile or on their tablet because you have moved to the cloud. Um, and that way you, you're showing to your customers and your uh, uh, owners that you're bringing more value, you're being, you're being more efficient. Um, uh, uh, the Google Suites or uh, Microsoft SharePoint is two simple examples of those. Go ahead and jump onto, pick, pick whichever you want and go jump onto it. So that is what I would say. Uh, makes makes a lot of sense, uh, Ashfaq. I think we all need that quick wins and case studies that will uplift the. Uh, let me let me quickly talk. Sorry, Varun. Let me quickly talk about this. Also, uh, is um, on the AC Inspire that the the um, the, uh, the software suite that we have for the, for the construction management um, uh, uh, for the industrialized construction. Um, uh, roadmap or the game plan that you have, um, it is a, uh, a suite of tools that are uh, that helps you manage the entire uh, uh, workflow from bomb generation to prefab orchestration uh, to uh, logistics and overall uh, status update uh, dashboarding is uh, uh, is also something that you should look at. Yeah, I think uh, for planning by the R, we, we really need tools that can help support such workflows. Uh, I can completely agree. And uh, like I was saying, we uh, those quick wins, uh, quick changes can help us a lot uh, in, in uplifting the motivation for everyone. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, digital transformation uh, for everyone is the need of the R. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts on something uh, short term then long term you know short term sometimes can be simple maybe sometimes if we zoom out get out to the balcony and think of simple solutions that are not very complex they would have a huge effect um let's let's rationalize no matter how much we automate and no matter how much we use augmented reality and virtual reality and remote sensing by the end of the day probably inspection we can make it remotely but there is somebody who needs to go to site and do actually the job. 
and this person's life is as important as as everybody else's life so we need really to keep those people safe today if you look at the prices of wearables of masks of goggles of wearable jumpsuits <laughs> the prices are rising uh, heavily but this is not the only problem the other problem is that sometimes some countries stopped to export because they want to keep them for their own people and for their own use so something like this might be very 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 disruptive uh, for an ongoing job site uh, where uh, which is which costs millions and millions of dollars um, so a small idea how can we mitigate this risk invest in a local most of our projects are in the middle of nowhere they are in the in the desert or in a very remote area so invest some money to have your local factory for masks for wearables for all those consumables that you need and let this factory procure for your own project for example another example i'm sure many of you have seen those disinfection tunnels um, and you have your crews moving from one zone uh, to another in the in the construction place so invest some money in using those in disinfection tunnels so that people as they are moving from one place to the other they are automatically disinfected it will be fun also um, and will bring a new <laughs> it, it, it will bring a new uh, culture uh, to the working side um, um, again the, the, this is really quick wins things we can talk about in the short term as you might have noticed, most of what I have been talking about in this in this talk is about the long term, the proactive, the change in the business processes, tax planning, lean construction, advanced for packaging. We really need to pick up the best for what we are doing and start changing the way we do business. That's the long term investment. Thanks a lot of sense, uh, Ryan. Uh, I think we all need to put safety first. Uh, we don't want uh, any rise in number of cases to really put this project completely on any project on hold. Um, I'll share one uh, interesting uh, uh, thing that I learned from the construction industry in India. Like you just mentioned, we, we need to source a lot of things locally and perhaps even uh, uh, if required for safety equipment, set up a, a factory locally. Uh, in India, uh, most of the construction work happens using uh, with migrant laborers. And they practically set up a small, I mean, makeshift residence for all the workers. So uh, they are uh, almost 24/7 on job site, virtually cut off. I mean, no one. They are not going in and out, uh, thus minimizing the exposure in some ways. Uh, so I think uh, with with that, we almost come to an end uh, of our discussion. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Ashwag and Ryan for sharing thoughts. Uh, those are very interesting thoughts for everyone uh, uh, around the impact of COVID-19 and reformation strategies to combat COVID-19, COVID economic crisis. Uh, I'm sure everyone who is attending the webinar feels quite informed as well. Uh, also, I'm now pretty confident that technology will be the ultimate resort uh, to most of our challenges. Uh, so with that, uh, I open the floor for any questions. Um, um, please uh, feel free to ask uh, any questions that you have. Uh, I think I have uh, one question from uh, Dave. Um, how does the uh, panel think COVID would impact the trend towards urbanization? Would there be a reversal of trend where people move from cities to suburbs, less densely populated areas? How would that affect the need for construction economies? Uh, and process uh, that are optimized for urban development. Ashfaq, would you like to take this one? Sure. Um, and you need to throw in the remote working uh, in that also, right? Now that you can work remotely. Um, yes, uh, the, I, I think the immediate, uh, uh, this thing is to move away from the cities, uh, especially after having seen what is happening in New York is there at least in the US on everybody's mind. And then uh, I live in Bay Area where home prices are through the roof and uh, companies are now letting them work. Like Twitter said that you can work uh, indefinitely re remotely. And uh, I'm sure once one large technology company starts, others will also follow. Um, so 
uh, you will see uh, in US the the trend moving away from the coast into this uh, inner uh, to the uh, 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 the mainland US, and that is uh, going to impact and change your uh, methods of construction or getting the material there and uh, doing it. Um, so that is something to look at. We are looking at it as opportunities because we used to do a lot of data centers in remote locations. Um, significant portion of our work is data centers and it is always in uh, very remote locations. Um, and uh, we had to adapt to those. And now if you have to have more people managing uh, that, then um, it will be a new trend for us to go look at it. But I definitely agree, we, that is a trend that will that is going to happen. Um, we, we definitely uh, find opportunities in such difficult times. Uh, and, but I, and this will be good news, actually, uh, to answer uh, the question also, uh, I agree with Ashfaq, but how this will affect the urbanization, this will mean more investment in infrastructure, more projects that deal with infrastructure, because obviously, uh, the infrastructure uh, connecting the remote areas to cities will have to be developed and improved and this means more projects and this means again the economy healing itself yeah. back to yeah. my original example so that's a great question makes sense thank you thank you uh, i see another question um, are we going to see more robots on on site and will this be the start of end of human labor at on site construction <laughs> Uh, Ryan, would you like to? <laughs> Look, my, my opinion about robotics, um, yes, already, already there are a lot of, uh, if you think about, uh, if you have seen those brick uh, laying machines, uh, 3D printing, what is a 3D printing in construction? It's another kind of robot. A uh, lot of the things can be, many of the things can be automated and we will see some kind of robots. Um, uh, being pushed more to side, they are more expensive. But as the cost of uh, as the cost of uh, uh, development and construction is increasing, they will, these ready-made proven solution will become more will make more sense um, uh, because health is much more expensive sometimes than automation. However, we should not dream a lot about having a robot to build a project and walk away and without any human interaction. Um, uh, yeah. Unless if you think David Copperfield is a robot. Is a, is a robot. <laughs> yes, we will see more automation. You see more and more automation. It will make more sense financially speaking at least. Yeah, yeah, financially. Ashfaq, would you, would you like to add as, some thoughts as well or should we move on? Yes. Um, I, I I get fascinated by robots uh, uh, any day, but um, you will find me more constrained today. Um, if robots uh, uh, were supposed to have it, then uh, you would have seen a lot of delivery robots, especially uh, from Amazon and wherever uh, come over. But unfortunately, robots are not there yet. Um, but they are more there in the factory environment. You will see a lot of robotics in the uh, prefab shops and the for the modular construction there you will see but at the job site um, it's it's um, not there yet yeah not there yet we, we all need this technology probably to do better and deliver on their promises uh, so next question here uh, projects were already delayed because of lack of skilled labor construction uh, skilled labor constructions pitiful efficiency stats are impacted and ultimately profit loss this was already happening uh, before covid 19 with the impact of covid 19 do you see this problem getting worse or will covid 19 be the catalyst for the industry to address and solve this problem once and for all um, again uh, ashfaq we want to Take a shot at it. Um, the they, they they were bad and um, and economic conditions are going to be even um, uh, is going to make everybody pause, right? Okay. But uh, we definitely have to find ways to improve our efficiencies. Um, I feel like I'm going back to the same answer over and over again uh, of. Uh, uh, prefab and modular 
Um, so to get get a lot of work done all, all, off the job site on a different uh, timeline, um, and then just go install it and walk away like a Lego-like feature is you're going to be the solution again. Um, but that is where I would go with. Uh, so. Okay. I'll take on the next question here. Uh, uh, the current norm of social distancing uh, uh, at construction site will have limitations in number of employees present at the location. Uh, how can AR VR technology help in reducing time uh, and increasing efficiency? Ryan? Well, uh, yeah, uh, I think. Uh, Again, I will, I will, this question forces me to repeat again what was said again and again is about, yes, lean construction and advanced for packaging is all about increasing efficiency and is about really, um, uh, if you want, uh, uh, do better planning uh, to, 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 so yes, the, the, the answer is yes, COVID-19, as we spoke before, is adding again and again a, const a major constraint to our work that we cannot but be that much in control. We cannot leave anything to chaos anymore. We cannot leave anything to chance. Chance. We cannot leave anything because this construction manager, he's 60 years old, he's very well, uh, he knows what he's doing, he has been doing it for the last 30 years. So leave him to do what he do knows best and he'll finish the job and we'll tap him on the, sh on the elbows. No, we have to be in control. So, so yeah. Go ahead, let's talk. It, 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 AR VR can really definitely come come here to help, um, right? The um, uh, like the AR is you can uh, have people um, be at one one location at a remote location and uh, uh, augmented reality. We have been using that for st uh, stub ups uh, and uh, for the uh, of plumbing and electrical uh, pipes where they are going and you don't have to walk the site so much. Um, and VR can be used for, uh, especially with the owners, uh, to see how the progress is um, and uh, what is the, uh, um, uh, is things going as planned. Um, so AR, VR can definitely come here to help. Yeah. The only thing that I would add perhaps is uh, AR VR is uh, helping in all aspects. Uh, probably uh, if it can just improve on speed a bit, I mean, it slightly takes longer for things to be done in AR VR. Uh, if we can achieve slightly more speed with that, I think uh, it, it will become uh, kind of the mainstream thing for any kind of workflows. Uh, yeah. I think I, I, I missed on the uh, augmented reality and virtual reality aspects. Uh, sorry to, to, to add something. There's, there's an idea that always comes uh, came to my mind as I heard you speaking. Augmented reality and virtual reality. Virtual reality will help a lot in inspection, in remote inspection. But actually, as we said before, the guy, there will be somebody who is on site. This is where augmented reality will help him to quickly get the information superimposed on top of what he's seeing in this camera or something and see the information he needs, take the decision, finish the job, and then get out of the place. So, sorry, I misunderstood the question in the beginning, but since you're talking about AI and VR, these are my thoughts about it. Sure, thank you. I think our uh, question is also interesting. Uh, for the people who have already invested, what is your take on it? Selling up a project? or waiting for economy to rebound back. How can we sustain and ensure about uh, safety, material safety, uh, when we don't have labors, labor costs may go up, what could be possible scenarios? I think uh, if I understand this question right, basically uh, you're already tied to a project, would you sell that up or wait for economy to bounce back? Your take. Ash. I am not a uh, real estate expert, unfortunately, right? Um, or in, so um, I don't know if I can answer that question in terms of um, uh, with some uh, some knowledge or expertise. Um, Even as a GC, I would say if you've taken up a project, would would are there any options to really give that up or uh, or you? 
your if you if you ask me in terms of that then i will tell you what we are actually seeing which goes back to the trends that we are seeing uh, it is much much harder to stop a project that has already started it is a lot more expensive and harder to stop a project so what we are seeing is the current projects that have been started are all continuing and they are com completing but it is the projects that are uh, the, the projects that were on the design board and that were on the planning stage that had not yet started are the ones that are getting really really pushed out and they are getting pushed out um not by uh, you know weeks they are getting pushed out much further uh, in terms of all the way to the end of the year or to the next year and that is the scary part right um of um but anyway uh, if you ask me that then it is not what i have heard uh, gcs and owners say is if the project is on started and go going is they, they are looking to finish it and finish it quickly so they are saying hey what is the quickest way to finish it let us finish this quickly okay i i would say as an answer if i can add to to this question is also me i'm not a real estate uh, expert but my advice is evolve or disappear change the face of your project if you are midway so if you're building let's say a luxury uh, apartment a luxury offices building for rent and you're midway try to do a concept change try to change it into some um um lower end for example uh, cubicles or rooms or small apartments possible of course uh, for quarantine because i think we will live for with, with quarantine for a long time uh, yeah. but if you're building a movie theater i don't think anybody will buy it from you at this stage <laughs> i don't think you can sell it so you really have to wait and figure out what will happen but try to think out of the box yeah while while we have time probably makes make changes do the best out of the project good suggestion so i think uh, we are um, towards the end of our session uh, i think those were uh, very interesting questions from the audience i want to thank you uh, for the great participation and uh, likewise ashfaq and ryan wonderful uh, to have you on the panel discussion very interesting thoughts very enlightening uh, so much um, uh, i've learned today thank you so much for being part of this thank you our honor thank you thanks a lot thank you everyone thank you